Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. Welcome to Tech Primers. In this video, we are going to see what is Redis and where we can use Redis in our application. So if you are not familiar with what is Redis, Redis stands for Remote Dictionary Server. So Redis is extremely fast and it's an open source in memory key value data structure store. So where do we use Redis, right? You would have heard this for, uh, term Redis with respect to Twitter because Twitter used Redis for caching. Okay, so it used Redis for publishing and subscribing your uh, client UIs as well. So if I open Twitter client, if let's say I open Twitter, so the web UI connects to a web socket and that is like subscribing to a channel which the data is publishing to. So if you see here, this is my Twitter ID. So this gets published, uh, subscribed to a channel. So in the backend of Twitter, so they have a channel and then if there is a message, they push it. So if you see here, the UI doesn't get refreshed, but I see some tweet here, right? So that is a um, Twitter is using Redis. So basically Redis is used for caching. It can be used for session management. It can be used for uh, publisher, subscriber based uh, messaging. And also it can be used in uh, places where they have leaderboards, where they want to publish um, n number of information immediately and they want to process them very quickly. So basically Redis is very fast because everything is stored in, in memory. So there, there is no hardware involved in it. So if you have a database, you cannot compare Redis with a database because red, uh, in a database uh, system, data is stored in the hard drive. So if you request for a data from the database, the database is going to get the data from the hard drive and then return it back to you. However, Redis has everything in its cache. So Redis doesn't have anything in its hardware. It can, in fact, you can redirect it to store it in a hardware, but it is a secondary option. So by default, Redis is a cache basically. So if you want to use Redis, you can load the data from the RTBMS onto Redis cache, use it wherever you want. And then finally, when you're done, you can just throw it off. So basically it's a caching database, right? So Redis was written on C language, so it was uh, written in C. That is why it is extremely fa uh, fast. So if you, you cannot compare anything with Redis, so Redis cache is extremely fast um, because it is written in C language, right? So let's see um, how to use Redis, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download Redis. So you can also download as well if you want to give it a try. So I'm just going to download it from here. Uh, it just has a zip, I believe. So I'm just going to say downloads and then save it. So let that get downloaded. Meanwhile, you can download it as well. So if you see here, it has already got downloaded. So I'm just going to say, show unzip this guy. <coughs> so the unzip is complete. So let's go to the command prompt and then, so where am I? I'm in the... Okay, so I mean there it is uh, directory where I downloaded and unzip. So let's go to the source direct, right? So if you're not familiar, I'll just, yeah. So what is there in the source? So there are lots of commands here. If you see here, there are .c and .h files. These are basically the C language uh, files. Right? So let me go out and then I'll do a make because uh, if you see here, the, uh, the files were all like .c files, right? So there were no, um, uh, runtime uh, bin files which we can execute so basically I think we need to compile the Redis code because that's just a raw code I, I just need to compile these now so I just did a make so let this get completed so then we will uh, see how to run that actually in fact it is done quickly cool so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to source and let's see what are all there. So there are lots of files. If you see here, all the .o files are all the ones which got created right now. So if you see here right now, the time is 8.29. So it got created just now. So there is a Redis CLI file as well. So I'm going to just say Redis CLI. So why is it could not connect to the Redis at? Uh, da -da -da. So now we need to run the Redis server. So what I will do is I'll just go to the Redis server. So let me go to source 
redis server right so this is now ready to accept the uh, server connection okay now i have opened another tab so what is happening here the uh, yeah the server is up the redis server is up now so we are going to use the uh, command line interface to connect to the redis uh, server so i'll just uh, do this uh, yeah if you notice here i am just running the redis uh, cli so the redis server is now connected from the cli okay so what can i do from here right so i can basically put values into the data uh, the data store basically uh, that's what we uh, we said right so we can put values and then get the values so what we are going to do is we are just going to put some uh, information inside the redis cache and it is a key value store so we have to put them as keys so we have to put anything inside a key so anything you want to put you have to have a key and you can put the value inside it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say set if you notice here by default it is suggesting something so it is saying you have to put the key and then the value so in the in the in our case i'm going to have the key as a name okay and i'm going to provide the name as tech primers all right okay i'm going to press enter and it just said okay so that means the value got inserted the key and the value got inserted into the redis server so i need to get this out so i'm just going to say get and give me that okay so i'm just saying that get and name so this is like a, a hash map right so it is basically like an hash map where you put key and a value and then you get it by the key so that is what redis is and if you notice uh, here it is so fast um one more thing uh, which i uh, liked extremely about the redis cache is you can have the subscriber publisher model without even having to create any uh, drivers or stuff like that okay and, and also there are lots of um, uh, polyglot libraries which you can use so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you uh, i'm going to run two different um, redis caches and then i'm going to show you how to do publisher subscriber model so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say uh, subscribe okay and i'm going to say a channel name so if you notice here by default it is suggesting me that give a channel name so i'm going to say the channel name is tech primals okay i'm going to subscribe to this channel so basically nothing has come here right and here i'm going to do a publish to that channel so i'm going to publish some messages to that channel right so i'm going to say hello youtube to that channel so if you notice here it said integer so one message got published and if you notice here hello youtube got received here right so in the subscriber we received the message which we published in the other channel so that is how the publisher subscriber works if you see here it is so simple right you just said a publish you just subscribed it nothing big right and there are lots of um, libraries which are which are there in the java or javascript or uh, not even not javascript so the java or the different poly uh, languages like ruby python and everywhere you can have different libraries which are providing lots of functionalities and you can use them to uh, communicate with the publisher and the subscriber so this is another good thing about uh, redis right so you don't have to store these messages in the uh, uh, in the in the uh, hardware it is all stored in the cache so that is why um, twitter if you notice they use the web sockets and then transfer the message Uh, or the push your message via the redis cache on to the ui so that is a very good use case of uh, using redis uh, when you want to have a very fast and quick publisher subscriber model right so that is what i wanted to show about what is redis so i hope you guys understood what is redis so in the next video we are going to see how to create um, a spring boot application with a redis cache so we are going to use uh, spring data redis which uh, spring provides in a spring boot application and we are going to see how to create a spring boot application how to communicate with the redis server inside that application okay hope you understood what is redis i'll just summarize what we discussed in this particular video so redis is a, a, a extremely fast open source in memory key value data structure store where we can use it for caching session management publisher subscriber model and wherever we want to have faster communication between the server and the client and you have like uh, let's say you have multiple channels or multiple um, clients registered to the server you can use uh, redis so you can load the data from the database onto redis cache and then use the cache to communicate with each other or use the cache as a faster medium for communicating with different different um, processes or microservices right and redis is written in c language that is why it is extremely fast 
and if you're not aware redis stands for remote dictionary server okay so that's it for this particular video meet you again in the next video with the redis uh, spring boot implementation thank you very much